Today we're going to take a look at two topics, bridges and blocks, which are related to the idea of cut vertices in graphs. If you'd like to see the definition or examples of cut vertices, take a look at this video and check the links in the description below. So let's start off by thinking about a bridge. A bridge in a graph G is an edge E of the graph such that the graph without that edge has more connected components than the graph originally had. Let's take a look at an example. This example happens to be connected. So a bridge in the graph is going to have to disconnect the graph somehow. If you take a look at the pendant edge, that is a bridge, because if you remove it, you'll be left with just an isolated vertex and a triangle. But if you take a look at any of the other edges, those that belong to the triangle, removing them will not change the number of components. So there's only one bridge in that particular graph. Now notice something. In fact, if you have an edge which is a bridge and you remove it, you will increase the number of components by exactly one. Compare that to the case of cut vertices, which when you remove them could create many more components. Similar to a theorem we've seen about cut vertices, we have a theorem about bridge edges, that an edge is a bridge if and only if there exist vertices u and w such that the edge lies on every u, w path in the graph. A second characterization of bridge edges is that an edge is a bridge if and only if it does not belong to any cycle of the graph. We've actually seen this theorem proved in a previous video. You can check the links in the description below for that proof. An important link between bridges and cut vertices is that whenever you have a bridge edge, u, v, and the degree of u is at least 2, then u happens to be a cut vertex. Let's take a look at our example from before. We know which edge is a bridge edge, and let's take a look at the end vertices. Let's label them u and v. And notice that u has degree that's high enough, it has degree 3. Now let's think carefully about what happens when we remove either the bridge or the vertex u. So first of all, when we remove the bridge edge, we get these two components, the triangle and the isolated vertex. We've seen that before. Okay, but what happens when you remove the vertex u? When you remove a vertex, you also need to remove all of the edges that used to be incident with that vertex. So the result will look something like this, an isolated vertex and then two vertices connected by an edge. So there is a difference between removing the bridge and removing just the vertex. But you can clearly see that u is a cut vertex. Observe that v is not a cut vertex, it only has degree 1, and if you remove it, you didn't disconnect anything. Now let's take a look at a bigger example. Here is our graph g, and what I want to do is think about where are the bridge edges. If you want, pause the video and check for yourself. I'm going to highlight them in blue. Here we go, we have these bridge edges highlighted in blue. And now I'm going to highlight the cut vertices of this graph, and I'll circle them in green. You may want to pause for yourself before I do so. Here they are. All of the cut vertices are highlighted in green. Now if you take a look at one of the cut vertices, u, and you remove it, you'll notice that you end up with three connected components. This is what I mentioned earlier, removing a cut vertex can create many connected components rather than just one more. We've noticed that when you have a bridge, you usually have a cut vertex. Now it's interesting to notice that the only connected graph which has a bridge and no cut vertex is, think for yourself, see if you can get it, this graph, the complete graph on two vertices. It's just a single edge, so removing it will create two components, so it's a bridge. But if you were to remove only one of those vertices, you're left with a connected graph of one vertex, so there is no cut vertex there even though there is a bridge. That's the unique case where this happens in connected graphs. Remember that if you have a connected graph, but you have a cut vertex, removing that cut vertex will disconnect the graph. This sort of brings up the next definition. A non-trivial connected graph is called non-separable or too connected if it has no cut vertices. If you think about it for a minute, this is like saying it's connected and it's even better than connected. It's too connected. Because if you have a connected graph and you remove a cut vertex, that will disconnect the graph. So having no cut vertices means that not only is it connected, but removing something cannot disconnect it. So it's better than connected. So now that we've seen the definition of non-separable, let's take a look at the idea of a block in a graph. A block is simply defined to be a maximal, non-separable subgraph. So to see what I mean, let's take a look at an example. 
So here I've drawn a graph and it does have a cut vertex. So we're going to take a look at the subgraphs of the graph, which are two connected or non-separable. Those are the blocks. So that's the graph. And now I want to write down the blocks. I'm going to write down the blocks with all the vertices labeled so that it's really clear that you can see where they're coming from. Okay, here they are. These are the blocks. Now, hopefully it's pretty clear that individually the blocks are non-separable. However, notice that this graph in red is a subgraph of the graph and it is non-separable, but it's not a block. The reason is because even though it's non-separable, it's not maximally non-separable. So it's important to keep in mind that when you're looking for a block, you want to fill in as much of the subgraph as you can until you reach a cut vertex and then it's no longer going to work out as a block. Here's a cool theorem about blocks. In a graph that has at least one cut vertex, there will be at least two blocks which each contain exactly one cut vertex. These special blocks are called end blocks. If we take a look at our example, we notice that there was only one cut vertex, that was U3, and it belonged to both of our blocks. So we have these two blocks which have the special property of having only one cut vertex in them. So they are two end blocks. Well, great, let's take a look at a bigger example. Let's draw the example in blue here, and I'll label the vertices 1 through 9. Next, I'm going to highlight which vertices are cut vertices, and I'll do that in red. And now we'll draw out all the blocks. You may want to pause to make sure that you can figure out exactly which are the blocks. Now, the blocks are all of these pieces. There's quite a few blocks here. Remember that vertices 4, 5, and 7 were cut vertices, so let's highlight those again in the blocks. Now find all the blocks where there is exactly one cut vertex. That's at this end, and then there's another one here, and another one here. So those three blocks are end blocks. In other words, we had a graph which had three cut vertices, so we know that there will have to be at least two end blocks, and we found them. There's three end blocks. So hopefully this gives you a feeling for what are blocks and end blocks and cut vertices and what it means to be non-separable or too connected in a graph. Check out the links beside me for related videos. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.